Well, I am excited with our next guest and my first podcast in a while. Uh, I wanted to save the best to restart, and it's a really good friend of mine, uh, Dan Martell. Dan is somebody you want to listen to because this is an individual who's built five companies, and he's exited the last three. He's you know, one of those guys that just is full of energy. He's invested in over 40 tech companies and some of the major players. I'm going to let him tell you about that. But, you know, one of the things that I really enjoyed, uh, Dan and I are fellow uh, exotic car owners, McLarens, we both love. But the uh, we've done a lot of events together and he, he's one of the most giving guys and and he's done it from a perspective of a coach. He's coaching some of the top founders in uh, the uh, software as a solution spot. And I wanted to bring him here because this program, this podcast is all about accelerating your entrepreneurial success. And Dan's a one, no matter what industry you're in, he's gonna make a difference. I'm John Bowen. I am the uh, founder and CEO of AES Nation. And stay tuned because this is gonna be amazing. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep, think bold, drive hard, watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com Dan, I'm really excited to bring you on and uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, I get a chance to share some of the uh, great entrepreneurs and friends that I get to hang out with. And, you know, so first of all, thank you. Uh, absolutely. My pleasure, John. Really appreciate the opportunity. Well, you know what, what I'd like to do, you know, one of the things we all, you know, you know, I only invite guys that have had guys and gals who have had a lot of success. Uh, but you know what? I, I do know you well enough that I know it wasn't a straight line. So give me a little bit of the backstory of how you got to where you are. So we have framing so that the entrepreneurs know where you're coming from and how they can use your advice. Yeah, I mean, John, for me, it starts as a 17 year old. I, um, you know, I grew up in a really challenging environment and at, uh, well, 16, actually, I found myself driving a stolen vehicle high on drugs with a handgun um, in a duffel bag sitting next to the seat. And um, I did a routine, I, I pulled off the highway for you know some gas and there was a routine roadblock. Uh, and when the police asked me to pull over, I decided to take off and got into a high speed chase and as I came around this neighborhood, think I could get away from them. Um, you know, yeah, maybe I watched too many car movies in, in my youth, but uh, I ended up smashing into the side of the house and I went to pull the gun to uh, aim it at the police to let them do their job. And I kept pulling on it and it got stuck and I kept pulling on it and pulling on it. And before I knew it, the police opened the door and kind of grabbed me and dragged me across the front lawn, pretty much my feet didn't touch the ground and threw me in the back of the cop car. And I woke up sober the next morning in a jail cell wondering what my life was gonna look like. And all I knew at that point was somebody was clearly looking out for me because I didn't expect to make it out alive from that moment. And I ended up doing uh, five months at an adult facility for the severity of my crimes and got released to, uh, after that five months, I got 11 month sentence, got released to a, a rehab center um, a therapeutic community for drug addicts uh, called Portage. And over pretty much a 10 month period, I worked on myself. I learned what drove me, my values, my belief systems, my anger issues. I rebuilt the relationship with my family and everybody that I had, you know, hurt and lost trust with over the years. And uh, it was at the end of that program that I was helping out um, the maintenance guy, Rick. Uh, it was an old church camp. They had this cabin that nobody had ever been in in a while. And uh, he asked me to help clear it out. And as I opened a room to one of the, a door to one of the rooms, I found this old 486 computer with this yellow book on Java programming sitting next to it. And I'd never been a computer kid or, and I opened it up and started reading it. It read like English. If you've ever seen JavaScript or Java, it's, it's, it's not hexadecimal numbers or zeros and ones. And, you know, I just followed chapter one in this this book and by, you know, within 30 minutes, I had the computer saying, hello world, which at the moment I thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I must be a computer genius. Cause I just made this computer 
you know, print this out. Uh, unfortunately, I was that was farther from the truth than I realized at the time. But what happened for me, John, was I essentially computer and programming and, uh, you know, shortly after the internet, they, they really became my new addiction. Um, and it's funny because my dad always joked if I could just find something that I wasn't illegal that I was passionate about, he thought I'd do pretty well in, in the world. And, um, and then, you know, entrepreneurship, because I'd always had an entrepreneurial tendency. I just, again, it wasn't legal. And um, since then, you know, I've, I've had the privilege of, you know, starting a bunch of companies and exiting. I raised venture capital for the last two. Um, let, let me stop you here, because I want to go back to the car. And, you know, you're always one of the fastest guys on the track when I'm with you. <laughs> so now I know the whole back. Now you know why. I've been practicing yeah. <laughs> for years. But, you know, the, one of the things, just for our fellow entrepreneurs, I mean, you know, this is where, you know, when you no one gets out of life unscarred. Some of the scars, you know, life brings us and others we go out and find. You went out and found one for yourself. But it's, you know, these turning points are just so amazing and, you know, it's so powerful. And, and one of the things that, you know, I, I want to, you know, that turning point in Java, you know, I, I was, I was I'm a little older than you, so in college I was punch cars that I was doing in uh, uh, Cobalt, Fortran, and API, and, uh, and it wasn't, it was, there was a little dribblish, and then you had to wait for the, the magic to happen. But, you know, this is, you know, this is really, you know, that background and so on, but let's continue the journey. So, you know, you, you, you know, because you, you've done a lot in a short period of time. So, you know, as you went, and you're now, you know, you find out that you're brilliant in computers. I mean, well, usually I then uh, computers yeah. slap us afterwards. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so I just, I, I hadn't, I, I just found it fascinating. And I think that's what I feel really blessed and lucky to have, have figured out is just something that I was willing to, you know, dedicate my time to and, and mastery and, and building tools uh, that I could have other pe people pay me for. I mean, I was doing software as a service SaaS way before it was even called that. I mean, I was just building, you know, the first thing I ever built wasn't even legal. It was a CD burner that my friends could kind of build their playlist and request their burnt CDs, you know, to be burned overnight from my computer, from their computer to mine using the internet. So like I was, uh, I've always and, been and that Dan, kind of I did, I burned eight tracks. So that's so again, that age <laughs> difference here. Different generations, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that was, that to me has always been how I've built every one of the companies. You know, even though I say five, um, I've really, you know, probably bought or built, you know, 30 other tools and apps and stuff. And um, and it just became my, my love and still is to today. I mean, it's the work I get to do through the portfolio I've built, you know, companies like Intercom and Hootsuite and, and Udemy are some of my investment companies and founders I've had the privilege to be involved with to, you know, having Mark Cuban invest in my last company, Clarity, or, you know, the CEO of, or the founder of Uber, Travis, invest in my previous company, Flowtown. That, that you know, and I grew up in a small town in Eastern Canada, right? Like that's, that was just all these things that have happened to me today, I don't take for granted one bit. And I just feel super lucky that um, I discovered that thing at such a young age and had a lot of time to get the failures out of the way because my first two companies were complete failures. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Dan, uh, you know, one of the things we were talking about how I met you or became new of you was Clarity. And uh, I thought it was just a great solution and uh, uh, met now a mutual friend, Ari Mizell, through that. I just, you know, it was a, a system where I paid, I don't know how much for the hour. I bought an hour this time because he had just written a really good book on productivity that I loved. And I go, yeah, I want to talk with the guy. So I searched on the internet and you came up and you know i mean this is always a little it's it's kind of how all these is things go one? yeah look at that a, yeah, right no. next to me. i mean <laughs> yeah. Ari, ari's book is world class so yeah sorry about that uh, well hold it up again i, I cut, didn't cut to the shot quick enough yeah right here I mean, this is literally the, sitting right next to my desk and this wasn't planned that's that's how much i love ari yeah and, and so you know I know, you know, I know a little bit of that story, you and I've talked about it, but you know, what was a big breakthrough? I mean, you've done a number of businesses along the way and how did it, you know, cause you know, you've really accelerated your, your huge demand right now, you know, by, uh, you know, not only the, as an investor, but also as uh, a coach for these uh, uh, startups. And I mean, that's, you know, I, I live in Silicon Valley, uh, it is, that's a high energy, you know, driving business. It makes a huge difference, you know. And I, 
So what was that big breakthrough, do you think? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's probably the realization that um, I needed to invest in myself. Like for a long time, I read computer books for, you know, seven or eight years. I read over 100 different books on programming and database design and architecture and front end, back end, every aspect of it. But I never read a business book. And here I was with two failed companies. And it really wasn't till I found this book by a guy named Tim Sanders, the ex CSO, the chief solution officer at Yahoo, that I wasn't even, I was so not a reader, um, you know, being diagnosed with ADHD, et cetera, that it was his book because he was the, you know, CSO and, and love is killer app, which was a technical thing um, of Yahoo. I bought the audio book, so I didn't even read it. I listened to it. And that, that book really transformed my life and, and put me on a path of, you know, three arguments in the book was one, you know, uh, you know, collect knowledge for you and your customers, which I thought was a really fascinating idea. Invest in your network, your, your network is your net worth. And then third was just be a good person in business. And I think I might've had a, you know, a negative belief back then that, you know, most successful business people were always looking to take advantage of others. And here I, I had a great, you know, model or reference of somebody that had a lot of success that, believed in the polar opposite and and to be able to you know model that because it's definitely the way i approach life um it really unlocked this kind of like lifelong learning so i've read over a thousand business marketing biography books you know i've got a library i've got a stack next to me i mean it's just now part of of the way i live and and for me it probably that was a big unlock to the next level to finally my third company i succeeded because i started reading yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. I always look at it. Uh, I've written over 20 books and you sell them, you know, certainly on Amazon. We sell them a little higher in our industry, uh, you know, uh, trade press. But in our, you know, you can buy the people's best ideas for 10 bucks on Kindle, maybe 20 bucks a hardcover. And, you know, to me, one of the secrets is uh, reading and lifelong learning the journey. And that's why, you know, you and I spent a fair amount of money at mastermind groups, too. Not only do we both coach, but we we really see the value of hanging out with other successful entrepreneurs who are on this journey together. And, you know, that that's made a big difference for me. And, you know, I've been with you enough that I know it has, you know, on both sides. You've been a big contributor as well as learning and taking those lessons. Uh, back. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm, I'm a student first, like as much as, you know, people, you know, come to my events or reach out to me for coaching, you know, I have the privilege of coaching the founders of ClickFunnels and Proposify and Carrot.com and some of the world's fastest growing technology companies. At the end of the day, I'm always the, the front of the, the audience, notebook open, ready to take, even if I'm speaking at the event, I show up in the morning, I want to be an active participant because to me, the ROI on uh, learning something, especially earlier on in your life, these these nuggets, these opportunities, these strategy, they just pay off so much dividends. You know, if anything, I wish I would have learned how to read faster at a younger age, um, so I could have you know been a lot further along than I am right now. Yeah, and, and I I feel the same way. You know, it's just I I have uh, you know a fair amount of books there, a bunch of them I've written as well as. You know, the, uh, my, I think my Kindle has over, you know, the a app has over a thousand books now. I mean, if I hear something, I just buy it instantly and I read it when I can. And, and it's just, it's been, there's so much value there constantly. And in and, and every, uh, before I talk to anybody, you know, if I can find a book from them, I do that. But, you know, tell me, Dan, one of the things I enjoyed uh, hanging out with you uh, you know, we, we were up at a car event. Uh, we were at Dirtfish uh, with Mastermind Talks, several of our friends, uh, Jason leading the crowd. And, uh, you know, then you were going off kite surfing, <laughs> uh, which I haven't tried. And uh, have tried surfing, but not kite surfing. And, you know, I love doing the, th the adventures and all that. And, but you were, you, you were taking the time to really stay involved with your clients, your investments and so on. You know, you're passionate about a lot of things. What are you most passionate about now? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's the opportunity to um, leverage video. Like, I think what's interesting for me is, you know, I've always been an operator. I've always been, you know, a builder, a CEO. And a couple of years ago, I decided that I wanted to give back. I wanted to essentially, you know, document everything I, I learned at the moment. At the time I had, you know, a two and a three year old 
um, two little boys and I just thought if something happened to me tomorrow, I haven't really, you know, you've written 22 books, I haven't re written a book. So my outlet was video and what, why I'm so passionate about it is, you know, we, you know, even though it's only, you know, I've got 33,000 subscribers to my channel, um, they're, they're all people that absolutely want to be there. There has been organic growth. Um, I've, I get and, half and a then I'm going to just stop you, your channel, cause uh, I'm going to embarrass myself for a second. You go, John, what's your Instagram handle? And I go, well, I don't know. I think I have one. I'm sure somebody set one up for me, but we're talking about, you've really done a great job on YouTube and you know, one of the things, uh, actually you encouraged me, um, you know, when we were hanging out together, I'm, I'm setting up a YouTube channel I'm going to be launching next month. I have, I did have one. I kind of did half ass and uh, yeah, got a thousand subscribers or maybe a little more than that. And uh, a couple of the videos were listened to though, a hundred thousand. I never bothered uh, trying to get subscribers or, you know, didn't know what all this stuff was about. And, and I am now paying attention, but I, I want to, the reason I'm bringing it up is so many of your fellow entrepreneurs, you know, the guys I hang out aren't doing this stuff and the power of video. I mean, I love video because you know, writing a book is really hard, you know, and if you, you are comfortable communicating like you are and, you know, really I am, I do a lot of video, but I do it in webinars and other formats and I'm going, hmm. So, you know, why are you passionate about YouTube? It's, it, for me, it's I've never seen a medium like I've been blogging and tweeting and kind of social media my whole life since pretty much it started. But video is always this challenge because I, I was not good on video. And I just thought, like, if I'm going to commit to the platform because I didn't want to travel, I wanted to share my story, share my message. But I wasn't I didn't want to do it at the sacrifice of my family. So I didn't want to be on a plane, you know, 300 days a year. So I chose to go all in on, on YouTube and video because I wanted to connect with people in a really authentic way. I wanted to bring them into my world. I wanted to um, share my ideas and do that on a consistent basis. So for three and a half years, I haven't missed a Monday, ever, regardless of a holiday, et cetera, I've published every, and now we started a new interview show called Escape Velocity on my channel. But it's really been just the impact of you know, teenagers, young adults, old people that have decided that, you know, they want to get into entrepreneurship. They, they really appreciate the content and it doesn't cost me anything. I literally can share what I've got to share and get, you know, thousands of views and, you know, support people all over the world. And it doesn't take anything away from the quality of life that I've committed to, to my, my wife and my kids. And for me, that's that's really incredibly special. And when I do get the opportunity, somebody comes up to me and says, hey, you know, I recognize you, I watch your YouTube channel. To be able to then dive deeper into their world, knowing my context, because if they watch my content, they know who I am, what I'm about. It's just more fun. I just felt like it was such a win, win, win that, you know, once I started, I, I made a commitment, I'm gonna do it for at least a decade. So I'm three and a half years in, I've got another six and a half to go. And uh, I won't miss a Monday unless something bad happens, um, because I just think it's it's one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, no, I, you know, I want to I want to go a little further into this too because I, I think this is something uh, I get asked on, you know, um, because of what I do, you know, webinars and some of the promotional things that we do, and you know, in every business. I mean, this is a universal thing that all of us have as entrepreneurs. Is you know, we've got a marketing, we've got a you know, really get, share our message and we want to have people who are qualified, you know, who we can really serve, you know, raise their hand. And, you know, we want to, marketing is all about starting great conversations and, you know, the tools we have now, because I'm a lot like you, uh, at your age, I was flying all over the world and the glamour of doing that. And there was a couple of years where I even had a private jet, you know, it wasn't mine, our company, I was CEO of a sports and entertainment group. And that sounds a lot better than it is because I, hey, I did. I was involved in 120 due diligence trips in, in a year, and it's like ah. So you know the power of video. I'm running. I'm running coaching programs in Singapore, in Hong Kong. We're about ready to start one in Sydney. We've got one, and this is financial services, and we're going to be doing it in London and also in Frankfurt, along with the U.S. and Canada. And you know, boy, what freedom does this provide us? But you know. 
one, I want to touch on you know, how hard it is to get started. I mean, particularly, I think of it, I, you know, I always joke that I've got a face made for radio and I'm doing all this video. You know, you, got, you get worried about the look and feel, you know, the cost, producing. Why don't you make some comments there, Dan, and then we'll go into kind of the, the structuring of getting your message across. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, is everybody's got, you know, uh, you know, full camera system in their back pocket ready to go. And I cut my teeth on Periscope, even though it's kind of like, you know, sunsetted in regards to its relevance. Uh, but continue, like Periscope really gave me this sense of freedom because I knew within 24 hours the video was going to be taken down. So I didn't have a long term commitment to what I was saying and I could be very much myself. That translated onto my YouTube channel. And right now when people are asking me, how do they start? you know, doing video and practicing, I just say, go live on Facebook. Like, I mean, we have the ability to at least have a built-in audience. If you have any friends that follow you at, at all, 100, you've got some audience for some feedback. And if you do a 30-day challenge where every day, maybe you sit there and outline, you know, 30 things you can teach the world um, and just do, you know, situation, uh, struggle, and then solution as your framework, the three S's, um, you know, in five minutes, you can essentially use that framework to do a daily, live stream and if you want you can delete it after 24 hours so you have that same benefit um and i think by the end of that 30-day challenge i think you'd be absolutely surprised how comfortable you can get and the impact you'll have on people's lives when you shine your light i mean that to me has been when we can live our authentic self and just share from our heart uh as if somebody was sitting next to you in the car and asked you a question and you could share from that perspective all of a sudden now it gets leverage right around the world instead of just that one conversation that you might be having today with a friend. Uh, and I think that's just incredible. Yeah, you, you know, none of us know. I mean, this I, I think of it as uh, strategic stumbling. Uh, Dan Selvin calls it strategic, uh, you know, byproduct. I, I like stumbling better in that uh, I've had, you know, out of videos that have resulted in a couple of, you know, a uh, few million dollar engagement type thing and what we're doing. and. And you know, I see it over and over again, and and I and in many situations, I think it's actually even more powerful than books. And you know, in combination, it can be you know extremely uh, powerful. But you know, so one of the things that you know, you I want to go to kind of the passion of helping other entrepreneurs, and you do it primarily. You know, your focus is in the software as a solution group, and. Uh, you know, there's just, you know, the multiples and that, the value when you get it right is huge. Unfortunately, I'm in Silicon Valley too, so I've got a lot of people I see go by and start it and, you know, the, the monthly reoccurring revenue is never quite there. The proof of concept doesn't happen. You know, how are you seeing these entrepreneurs break out, you know, that you're working with, you know, helping them kind of that you know, get that, you know, really what this podcast is all about is accelerating entrepreneurial success. And one of the hardest things is when you're start, you know, in a startup situation, that's a big deal, Dan. Yeah, I mean, so at a, at a high level, you know, I, I coach uh, founders to achieve one outcome and it, I call it the perfect exit. And that's everything around understanding where we're gonna end up, how it's gonna look. And, and for different companies, it could be getting acquired from a strategic buyer, could be a public offering, or it could be bringing in a CEO and running the company and keeping it as an asset. So that's kind of the always the outcome, but in regards to even getting enough traction to be in a position to be on that journey or that path, for me, there's two things that's required uh, in all companies really, but specifically in software, is you need to have a process for building the product and you need a process for selling. And that's where you see a lot of technical people. If you had to ask me which one's more important, typically it's the building because the, the selling, I think it was um, Bill Gates that said this once, he said, I'd rather teach a programmer how to market than a marketing person how to program. And I believe the same thing. It's definitely easier to start with somebody who can build and teach them how to sell. Um, but the truth is, is I usually coach and 70% of my coaching clients, I have clients all over the world, mostly in the U S but you know, South Africa to Australia and Europe, um, most of them are bootstrapped. So what's cool about that is they don't need to grow at an unrealistic expectation. Um, the ones that end up raising capital and help clients raise over 200 million in funding, mostly that's a hundred percent for marketing and acceleration. It's not for product development. Um, so what I'm really good at is helping people that have the core product built and have what's called product market fit and pouring jet fuel on that so that they can have 
venture backed growth without venture backed funding required. And those are all my strategies I've ever created. That is how I approached the test of, is this something I want to share? Is can this be executed without a bunch of money in funding? Yeah, no, I, I mean, and, you know, you and I've talked about, you know, there are trade-offs of venture capital <laughs> along the way. And particularly, you know, if, if you, you know, the, the, the cost to do proof of concept and really, you know, I don't know what it is in today's world when I was I did a little venture stuff. You know, it was a minimum of a million dollars of net income that they could show that the product there, there was demand for the product. I mean, it's one thing to build something really great and nobody cares type. You can't you know, it's just not usable. But boy, once you have that, then you know, really understanding the marketing side and how to bring that out. And, uh, you know, because so much of it, you got to have a good product. But you you know you got to get that message out too, and it's a you know it's a tough balance uh, along the way, and uh, you've been able to help you know many uh, get traction, you know, and this is I don't think this is unique at all to this you know industry. I mean I'm in financial services, and uh, you know it's it's very much if anything it might be even tilted unfortunately more to the marketing part than it should be because it's so intangible. The messaging, the communication is so important. You know, all of us, you know, our fellow entrepreneurs. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's all about stacking growth. I think that the big idea that's unique about my approach is I believe that most entrepreneurs when it comes to, you know, building a growth channel, and that means, you know, choosing the channel, figuring out you know, the the uh, message that you insert into it, how do you convert that using a conversion tool and then a follow-up funnel. Those four steps, most people are always looking for the next silver bullet, so they just don't go deep enough. They don't operationalize that channel. And that, for me, it doesn't matter if you think of doing, you know, LinkedIn ads to a partner reseller strategy or an inbound content SEO strategy. Uh, you want to go deep enough in that funnel to truly operationalize it either through automation or people so that you can then move to number two, three, four in regards to your growth stacking to have that, our, that, that essentially compound interest on growth. Most companies struggling, they actually have had little glimpse and sparks of success in different marketing channels, but because they weren't willing to be patient and go deep um, and try to move on to that next silver bullet, uh, you know, they show up at my doorstep struggling and, and with a flat line because of the lack of focus and, and, and persistence. So my whole thing is growth stacking, not growth hacking, because I really think that growth, much like compound interest, it's, it's a series of smart investments that continue to produce returns. And then you stack them on top of each other to create, you know, the hockey stick growth. Yeah. And, you know, Dan, I, I totally agree. I mean, this is one of the things that I've learned in my career, too, is that, uh, I don't call it growth stacking. I may use that term, but I'll give you credit now. <laughs> but the, you know, what, what we do is in today's world with the technology, I'm looking around, I got all these screens and everything else. You know, the data flows of everything we all do now, the ability to test and, you know, we get discouraged. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've had plenty of marketing campaigns that didn't initially work. And with a little tweaking, they worked and they started working well and we could put in invest more money. And then at the same time, I've had them where they were working really well and they teeter off. And, you know, and the, the temptation is for all of us to you know, find the silver bullet, the one thing that's going to work. And the reality is, you know, let's say you do partnering. Well, strategic partners are phenomenal. I've had millions and millions of dollars of sales that way. But people change jobs and the next guy I've had one situation where you know I had almost half my revenue mainly because it was such a great partnership guy left the next person didn't love me you know the you know the the algorithms on advertising paid traffic webinars are in and out and subject I mean this is you know is this something as you growing out is that message extremely well received or is that something you have to really help them with I think once you see the data and you see the diagram, it's self-evident. You know, Ben Horwitz from Andreessen Horwitz, you know, an extremely, you know, successful entrepreneur himself and now investor, he calls it, you know, lead bullets versus silver bullets. Like success is truly, you know, proven strategies. Sure, you're gonna have these step functions of growth where you figure something out and for a short period of time, others don't. But, 
you know, when you're going down and you're deploying a channel, a marketing channel for growth, you need to be patient. And as you mentioned, you know, at first it won't look like it's going to work, but what I, I call it a three iteration test. If we can give it three solid iterations, like true scientific method kind of approach to the channel, um, that's where we'll know if it's truly a dud or if it's a stud. And to me, that is, it's the lead bullets, not the silver bullets. No, that's great. Yeah, Dan, you're obviously, you use a lot of technology. I do too, but you're in the industry. You know, one of the things I always ask guests, is there any uh, smart app application for, you know, uh, your fellow entrepreneurs that you would recommend? 100%, I've got a few. I've got one Voxer. If you don't know what Voxer is, just think of it as like walkie talkie. Um, the use case that I think will be interesting to a lot of the entrepreneurs listening is, one, I believe in, it's not about uh, inbox zero, it's zero inbox. Meaning that I have somebody, my executive assistant who manages my email inbox, and then she communicates with me via Voxer, and then I can use voice to reply. So I am three or four times more efficient responding using voice than I am sitting down in front of a computer and having somebody else process the inbox, use Voxer to send me, you know, questions about how they should respond and then reply using voice, I think is incredible. The other now, use- let, let me stop you just for a second, Dan, because I'm going to say that has, Voxer has changed my life too. So uh, it has been, I use it exactly the way and I have a virtual company. I have companies and my assistant, I'm in Silicon Valley. My immediate assistant is in, uh, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and I, I, you know, as much I use this mic more for dictating emails, and it takes a long time for me to do that. Voxer doing it internally with my top clients, you know, the whole thing, uh, it's been a game changer. So I, I just want to say, hey, if anything out of this podcast, you should check it out and use it for a week or two on the smartphone, not the desktop application and you'll be amazed. Start small, but it'll become a big deal. Yeah, so so to me, Voxer, that use case is great. And the other one I wanna share with everybody is just daily standups with your team. And the standups are really simple is everybody should just drop, you know, have a group chat in Voxer and just answer, what did you, what are the three things you completed yesterday? What are the three things you wanna complete today? And are you stuck? And it can't be longer than 30 seconds. And if you have everybody on your team on a daily basis, just drop that voice message in there I mean, as a leader, you're gonna be able to manage and, and connect with people and just feel like a really good rhythm of work uh, in a way you wouldn't otherwise, even better than doing that um, you know, in, over email. So that's, that's one tool. Second tool I'm gonna to brag up is this little thing here called the Ura Ring, which John, I believe you may have one because I remember we were hanging out. We I do uh, have that as well. And I do, I think we're, uh, we're aligned on a few things yeah, here, Dan. That's, that's why we're such good friends. I mean, this is even before we, we were both sharing these same tools. Like, to me, the, the O-ring is uh, really helped me perfect my sleep. And I thought I was sleeping well before, it just transformed everything in the app. It integrates and syncs on your smartphone. It's just a really great tool, a little expensive, but worth uh, checking out. And then the third is just Zapier. It's an automation tool that you use, which is the glue of the internet between different business systems and automation. And it's pretty much the, the, that glue of my backend business from taking things from a Zoom session you know, to automating emails, to uh, moving data around my different business systems, because I also run a virtual team across the whole world. And uh, Zapier to me, I think is, is just a powerful uh, like tool that everybody should really learn to master in their business. Well, and the last one I haven't learned to master, but I have tech people that have learned to master that. So it's all done and, and it's a great tool, you know, connecting all these different applications we're using that are so cost effective. Uh, you know, it's, you know, there, I mean, there's just so many good things. One of the things I want to do, let me just, I got a little animation here uh, on resources. What I'd like to do, Dan, is I'm going to pull up your website and uh, let me grab it here. And, you know, tell us what's on there, if you would. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I mentioned earlier is the ability to sell, you know, build and sell are kind of the two master skills I think, you know, most entrepreneurs and leaders want to practice. And on the website, I have a framework called the Rocket Demo Builder. So if you're ever in a position to, you know, pre-sell your software or you're doing a demo of your services or solution to a new customer, I'd highly recommend going there, downloading it. 
Um, on that same page, I've got a bunch of videos. As I mentioned, I've been doing it three and a half years, over 300 videos uh, that I've produced on my YouTube channel to really help every entrepreneur, everything from personal productivity, integrating the family life, as well as um, you know all the marketing and sales hacks that uh, I love to, to share. They're all up there on my YouTube channel. I mean, I try to pretty much, I've promised the world that I will share 98% of everything I know. And for those that want to move faster and work with me directly, that's the 2% that I keep for my coaching clients. But I'm an open book. I share a lot uh, and it's all on my website. So let me go to the last segment here on key takeaways. And I mean, this has been really valuable, Dan. You know, I mean, as I kind of am looking at my notes, I mean, one of the things that every entrepreneur has to be a lifelong learner. If you're gonna be a successful entrepreneur and what, Dan really encouraged all of us to do, and I, I'm going to second that, third it, fourth it, is get passionate about video. I mean, there is not, you know, this whole power of one to many uh, is huge and to be very focused, but at the t same time, you know, the strategic stumbling that will happen out of videos. And, you know, we're picking up clients, the, the very small YouTube channel without much effort at all we probably pick up a client or so every other month and I haven't done a video in three years. And it's like, after getting together with Dan, I go, hmm, maybe that's, you know, if we're talking about stacking growth, you know, that's a huge thing. And always focus on the end as you're, you know, whatever company you have, you know, we, we really wanna focus on exiting, okay? Whatever that exit looks like for you, you may, you know, think you're never gonna exit, you know, uh, none of us have yet figured out immortality, but at some point we're going to exit one way or the other. And by designing it to be successful on purpose, to maximize, create that value, huge. You know, get the traction, focus on both building a great client experience as well as the marketing, uh, you know, stacking growth. I love, you know, not looking for the silver bullets, the lead bullets, and then the applications, particularly, you know, I'm going to just, the Voxer uh, will change your life. And I, I am not, I've got the R ring as well, and I'm not a good sleeper, and it's really helped me improve my sleeping a lot too. So, you know, again, there's so many productivity tools, relatively inexpensive, your human capital is really worth it. Dan, why don't you, uh, in wrapping up, one last comment. Yeah, I mean, you know, quick story. In the last three weeks, I, and I'm not going to share this to brag, but it's, I feel like it's a real privilege and it's a dream that I just couldn't have even written out. Um, uh, started with four days in Toronto with 120 of my coaching clients flying in from all over the world and, you know, having the, the privilege of leading them to at the end of that event, jumping on my friend's private jet and going to, you know, Greenland, Iceland, Ireland uh, for 10 days. You know, essentially it was like a bachelor party, but nobody was getting married. Um, and then ending with me arriving home, you know, thanks to you actually, John, and the encouragement of just saying, screw it, let's do it. Um, you know, buying a McLaren. I don't, I don't, know how all of that came to be because I didn't start off the year with that even on my peripheral. But if you ask me how it came to be, I would say three things. One, I really believe in the power of dreaming big. And I think that surrounding yourself with people that do that is the fastest and easiest way to kind of build that into your DNA. Number two, taking massive action towards those dreams, um, being 100% okay with not knowing the how, but just focusing on the what. And then third is being insanely grateful for the wins when you succeed and, and even for the losses because everything and who I am today, you know, from that 17 year old that struggled with addiction to um, the software success I've had are all a byproduct of the challenges that I've had to face and, and asking myself, who do I need to become to overcome those challenges? And that to me is if somebody asked me like, summarize it it would be those three things you know dream big take massive actions and be insanely grateful and and the world will just collude in your favor well and i'm going to encourage everybody now that i know how to log on to instagram too let me pull it up here yeah this is dad's instagram and you can see some of the pictures of both the new mclaren and then also uh the private jet a little golfing along the way and a lot of fun along you know family friends and fun and you know this is one of the things that Dan, I think you you and I totally agree is, you know, we build businesses to support the quality of life we want for all stakeholders. We gotta take care of ourselves, you know, that enlightened self-interest so that we're sustainable to do this. 
But boy, what a difference. And always remember your clients, your future clients, those future strategic partners, all the stakeholders are counting on you. Don't let them down. Go ahead and accelerate your entrepreneurial success. We'll see you in the next podcast. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.